And then there's this idea of concepts yes. that puts some. Now I've never even, I don't know if it was ever available in any form, but uh, it puts some constraints on the stuff you can parameterize essentially. Uh, let it's, me try and explain. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, it wasn't there 10 years ago. We have had versions of it that actually work for the last four or five years. Um, it was a design by Gabby Dos Reyes, uh, Drew Sarton, and me. We were professors and postdocs in Texas at the time. And um, the implementation by Andrew Sarton has been available for uh, that time. And it is part of C20. Uh, and there's a standard library that uses it. So this is becoming really very real. It's available in uh, Clang and, and GCC, uh, GCC for a couple of years, and I believe Microsoft is soon, soon going to do it. We expect all of C20 to be available so in all the major compilers in 20. But this in kind of stuff is, is available now. Yeah. I'm just saying that because otherwise people might think I was talking about science fiction. And so what I'm going to say this is, is real. concrete. You can run it today. And there's production uses of it. So the basic idea is that when you have a, a generic component, uh, like a sort function, the sort function will, will require at least two parameters. One, a data structure with a given type and a comparison criteria. And these things are related, but obviously you can't compare things if you don't know what the type of things you compare. And so you want to be able to say, I'm going to sort something and it is to be sortable. What does it mean to be sortable? You look it up in the standard. It has to have, it has to be a sequence with a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. There has to be random access to that sequence. And there has to be, um, the, the element types has to be comparable. Which by default, less by than less operator than. can by, operate on, I do, yes. less than logical so operator can operate. Basically, what concepts are, they're compile time predicates. They're predicates you can ask, are you a sequence? <laughs> yes, I have a begin and end. Uh, are you a random exit sequence? Yes, I have uh, subscripting and plus. Uh, is your element type something that has a less than? Yes, I have a less than. It's And so basically that's the system. And so instead of saying, I will take a parameter of any type, it'll say, I'll take something that's sortable. And it's well-defined. And so you say, okay, um, you can sort with less than. I don't want less than. I want greater than or, or something I invent. So you have two parameters, the sortable thing and the uh, comparison criteria. And the comparison criteria will say, well, I can, um, you, you can write it saying it, it should operate on the element type and it has the comparison operations. So that's the, simply the fundamental thing. It's compile time predicates. Do you have the properties I need? Mm -hmm. So it specifies the requirements of the code on the parameters that it gets. It's very similar that. to types, actually. But operating in the space of concepts. <laughs> concepts. <laughs> the, the word concept was uh, used by Alex Stefanov, who is sort of the father of generic programming in the context of C++. You know, there's other pl uh, places that use that word, but the way we call it, generic programming is Alex's. And, and he called them concepts because he said they're, they're the sort of the fundamental concepts of an area. So they should be called concepts. <laughs> and we've had concepts all the time. If you look at the KNR book about C, C has arithmetic types and it has um, um, integral types. It says so in the book. And then it lists what they are and they have certain properties. The difference to nay is that we can actually write a concept that will ask a type, are you an integral type? Mm 
Mm -hmm. Do you have the properties necessary to be an integral type? Do you have plus, minus, divide, and such? So uh, maybe the story of concepts, because I thought it might be part of C plus plus eleven, C C O X whatever it yeah. was at the time. What what was the? Why didn't it? What like what? We'll we'll talk a little bit about this fascinating process of standards because I, I think it's really interesting for people. It's interesting for me, but. Why did it take so long? What shapes did the idea of concepts take? What were the challenges? Back in 87 or thereabouts. 1987? Wow. In 1987 or thereabouts, when I was designing templates, obviously I wanted to express the notion of what is required by a template of, of its arguments. And so I looked at this. And basically for, for templates, I wanted three properties. I wanted to be very flexible. It had to be able to express things I couldn't imagine because I know I can't imagine everything and I've been suffering from languages that try to constrain you to only do what your, the designer thought good. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to do that. Secondly, it had to run faster as fast or faster than handwritten code. So basically, if I have a vector of t and I take a vector of char, it should run as fast as you build a vector of char yourself without parameterization. And, second, and thirdly, I wanted to be able to express the constraints of, of the arguments, have proper type checking of the interfaces and neither I nor anybody else at the time knew how to get all three. And I thought for C++, I must have the two first. Otherwise it's not C++. And it bothered me for another couple of decades that I couldn't solve the third one. I mean, I was the one that put function argument type checking into C. I know the value of good interfaces. I didn't invent that idea, it's very common. but. I did it, and I wanted to do the same for templates, of course, and I couldn't, so it bothered me. Then we tried again, 2002, 2003. Gabby Dostres and I started analyzing the problem, uh, explained possible solutions. It was not a complete design. Uh, a group in University of Indiana, an old friend of mine, uh, they started a, a project at Indiana, and we, we thought we could get a good system of concepts in another two or three years. That would have made C++ 11 to C++ 06 or 07. Well, it, it turned out that I think we got a lot of the fundamental uh, ideas wrong. They were too con uh, conventional. Um, they didn't quite fit C++ in my opinion. It didn't serve implicit conversions very well. It didn't serve mixed mixed type arithmetic, mixed type computation uh, computations very well. A lot of stuff came out of the functional community, and it that community didn't deal with multiple types in, in the same way as C++ does, had more constraints on, on what you could express, and didn't have the draconian uh, performance requirements. And basically, we tried, we tried very hard, we had some successes, but it just in the end wasn't, didn't compile fast enough, was too hard to use, and uh, didn't run fast enough unless you had uh, optimizers that was beyond the uh, state of the art. They still are. So we had to do something else. Basically, it was the idea that a set of parameters has uh, defines a set of operations and you go through an interaction table just like for virtual functions, and then you try to optimize the um, interaction away 
uh, to get performance. Mm. And we just couldn't do all of that.